So like I said, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. Um, if you uh, hit the chat button on Monday, uh, you'll chances are I'll be the one answering the question. Uh, it'll either be me or John Brock. Um, and then um, I also do a lot of the level one and level two training uh, online. And then uh, this webinar session and uh, some development stuff in the past in the in the background. So the other thing, um, I also um, I am a working industrial designer. I own a design consultancy called the Outside Digital Art and Design. Um, I posted the info in the chat. Um, you're welcome to take a peek at my work there and uh, and uh, love it or hate it or whatever you want to do. But it's all it's all there uh, for you to take a peek at to see kind of what I'm at, uh, what I'm about. So. Um, I'm trained as a car designer. I actually went to Center for Creative Studies in Detroit. Uh, I have a car design degree, and um, I actually spent most of my career working in the toy industry. So um, I've worked for the toy and in, in, toy product and entertainment industries. I've done a little bit of automotive work along the way, um, but uh, I've built thousands and thousands of digital models uh, along the way. And, and um, before I worked at, at McNeil, I was a uh, I was a tech and a trainer and a development guy for T-Splines, and so I did a lot of work with uh, Matt Cedarberg and his group uh, before T-Splines went to Autodesk. God rest their soul. Um, so with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump in and take a take a, a look at what we're going to build. And this this essentially let me get my image here. Um, where is it? There it is. So. I've just got this little sketch I did, um, and the idea behind this is we're just going to try and do a little bit of an organic shape, um, talk about it's got a little bit of hard shape, a little bit of soft shape, and then this kind of overmolded grip, and then a little logo, and some stuff like that. So we're not going to get crazy, but I, I like these kind of forms because they offer um, some opportunities to force some of the tools to do things that you might not necessarily uh, think of using them for uh, at the beginning, and it'll also give us an, uh, an opportunity to do a little bit of uh, of CV editing and uh, a little bit of direct point manipulation and things like that. So, all right. So with, that's what we're going to work on. So the way I start every every model is uh, with a reference image. I either do a doodle for myself that I'm not going to show to anybody, or um, you know, I'll work with a, I'll work with client art that somebody gives me and something like that. And the way that we do that is we start with the picture frame command. And if you've been using Rhino for a long time, you probably used to use bit, background bitmap for this. Uh, picture frame is the new and improved background bitmap, and that's what we're going to use going forward. In fact, background bitmap for V6 is actually going away. So, um, so the the idea behind picture frame is first of all, it's much more editable than background bitmap. You can actually pick the image and move it around as opposed to having to use like that funky interface that you used to have to use um, up here. Where is it? I don't even use it anymore, but um, I think it's in view. There we go, background bitmap. Instead of using all this stuff up here where you had to actually go into the menus to edit the thing, you can just edit it directly with, with Gumball. So you can rotate it. Um, all that kind of stuff. The other cool thing is if you need a second view, you can just tap Alt and make a copy use dragging using Gumball. That's one of Gumball's superpowers where if you grab a, 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 an object and start dragging it and then tap the Alt key, you'll see a little plus sign show up. I don't know if you noticed that. You can see the little plus sign there uh, on the cursor. You'll get a copy. So. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll have a piece of art that's got four views on it, and I'll just copy and paste using Gumball uh, four views of that, and then I'll set it up on layers here. This will be my top view, my front view, my side view, my back view, whatever, any, anything like that that you want to do. In this case, we've only got one view. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to just stick it back in space a little bit, and uh, we're going to... Uh, it, in the front view, that'll allow us to be able to still see it, but in the perspective view, it'll be out of our model space, so we don't have to worry about it getting in the way. All right. So the the only issue that we have right now is is it's too dark. Um, if I were to draw a line on top of it, you can see that my geometry is getting lost, and that's a uh, that's a hassle. So let's pick it. Let's go to the let's go to the properties over here, and if you don't have this window open, just pick something and hit F three. So if I pick this and hit F3, 
it goes to the properties. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is go to the material. And then we're going to just drag down here a little bit and we're going to edit the transparency. And you can see as we edit the transparency, the image starts to fade. That will allow us to be able to model on top of this thing and not, you know, not have it be obtrusive. We still have the reference and we can still edit that anytime we want. We still have the reference, but it's not, you know, it's kind of not in the way. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of center this over the, over the origin so that I've got, you know, a base to work from. And then I'm going to sign layer by right clicking and I'm going to just change object layer and then I'm going to lock it. And the nice thing about this is now that it's, now that it's on a layer, I'll rename it, double click. image front, and then if I had an image top, an image right, or whatever, I'd do a separate layer for each one of those because I can control the visibility of each one of those layers by, um, you know, using the, the visibility icon in the layers palette. All right. Anybody using this so far? I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is not extraordinarily new news. If it is, then, you know, I just paid for the webinar for you. So, because <laughs> uh, picture frame is, uh, is pretty much the... Uh, the bomb when it comes to bringing in reference information. The other thing about picture frame that you that you can do that you couldn't do with with uh, background bitmap is you can have multiple images. So you could have ten versions of this out in space, and you could have you know then you can just cycle through them depending on what you want to do. All right. So layering the transparency background or the uh, picture frame and all that kind of stuff. That's that's kind of the uh, the starting point for all of this stuff. So once we're in, um, you know, since this is a ski pole, we probably want to start with the, the actual pole itself in order to, to be able to have some reference information to work from. Um, and, uh, and then um, we'll work, starting from the ski pole, we'll work off of that. So let's place that in space. Hang on a second, I got a client bugging me. Sorry. All right. So let's place that in space first. We're just going to do that simply with a, with a cylinder. Uh, I'm going to tag zero enter to place it at the origin. And then I'm going to hold down shift to constrain. And then we'll give it like, and if I were to change my direction to none, I could then use the shift key to drag straight down in space. And we'll just do something about like that. We don't need to get nutty with it. We just need to have that in space as reference. And I'll make it a little bigger just by stretching this out. And that should give us a pretty a pretty decent place to start as far as how we're going to build this thing. So so now we need to look at this, right? And we need to start kind of taking a peek at the design to figure out what are the main characteristics that we're going to try and be dealing with. And since this is a kind of an ambiguous sketch, which I did intentionally, um, we have to then kind of use our designer's mind to interpret kind of what we're looking for. And the first shapes that we're going to identify certainly are the, are the main ones, which are the profiles, right? So we've got a profile here. And we've got a top profile and we've got this bottom profile. And then we have to start kind of extrapolating in our mind what the cross sections of the stuff is going to look like. But let's let's go with the easy stuff first and let's just let's just nail down let's just nail down the profiles first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw kind of a kind of a slushy curve here. And then I'm going to because the idea is I want to use as few points as possible. I don't want to, I don't want to like machine gun this thing full of points because that's going to give me a surface that's, that's uh, really dense. So one of the, one of the first, um, I don't want to say errors, but misconceptions that people have about, about NURBS modeling is that you need to have a million points on each curve. And, and actually the idea is you want to use as few points as possible um, and pull the points farther than you think you need to. All right. So the rule with nerves is you need, in order to make a corner, you need three points. Right. In order, this is this is the this is the shape of a nerves corner. It's got a point here, a point here, and then a point in the center to control what happens on that curve. 
So if we're doing an S curve, we're going to have a minimum of six points, right? So we're going to do we're going to do one, two, three, one, two, three, and that gives us an S curve. What we don't need is this. We don't need that, all right? Because this is going to give you a terrible this is going to give you a terrible surface. So if I build a surface off of that, you're going to have isoprams all over the place, and it's going to be really difficult to edit. So we want to try and keep this stuff simple and organized. So think about this, right? So I've got, a, I've got a curve here. So I've got one, two, three. I've got a curve here. I can use the end of this one. Let's see. Let's see how I did before I shoot my mouth off. So I've got one, two, three here. And then I've got, I can actually use this point as the first point of the next one. So I've got one, two, three here. And then I can use the next one. I can use this as the point for the next one, which is one, two, three. So I did okay. This is actually probably as spare as that curve can be without starting to lose shape. Because if I get rid of this point, right, now I don't have enough information in order to be able to make this transition. So um, the joke I like to tell about this is, is uh, you know, there's, a, there's an old car story about Colin Chapman, who is the... Uh, who is the proprietor of Lotus Cars. And, and the joke used to be that when he'd build chassis, he would uh, keep taking parts away until the chassis collapsed under its own weight, and then he'd put one part back in, and that was the final design. And whether that's true or not, you know, the, the, that mentality of taking away until it falls apart and then putting the last one back in is a really good um, way to think about how to build your curves. You don't, you don't want to have more information than you need, all right, because it's just going to make your life difficult to edit. So this shape here, as we look at it, is fairly uh, easy to describe with a single curve. So I think we're going to go ahead and just, and just leave it as such. This one here, we've got a little hook with a little peak, and then we've got another shape here. So this, this shape, this W shape, is probably not ideal for doing with one curve. In fact, if I'm looking at this design, there's actually kind of a bone line that seems like it's kind of coming through here, which is going to kind of lead me to believe that maybe the shape on the back of this thing is going to be a little different than the front or whatever. So let's, let's actually do this with two separate curves. We'll leave it sharp, and then we'll model the transition later uh, when, we do the, when we do the surface. So let's Again, I'm only going to use I'm only going to use three points here, and I missed it, but that's fine. I'm going to go back and edit, and then I'm only going to use three points here, and I'm going to see what I can get out of this. If I need to add another point, I'll add another point. It's not a big deal. So let's just pull this up a little bit. So that one that one came in okay. Let's see about this. May or may not be able to get this one. We'll see. This might be a a double compound curve. Eh, I'm going to call that good. That's good enough for webinar work. All right. So we've got that. Let's do our let's do our top our top shape here. And again, this I might be able to pull this off with three points. So let's go ahead and try it. You don't need you don't want more. If you don't need more, you don't want more. It's a very un-American concept, I know, but. Um, don't take more than you actually need. And then we've got our bottom shape in here, which is actually described with a straight, eh, it's a slightly curving line. And then we've got these shapes down here, which we're actually going to deal with a different way. But So this gives us the basics of kind of what we're looking for in our shape. And this top shape here, Let's go ahead and describe it, although I don't know, necessarily know how this is going to be super useful. Now, when we look at this, <clears throat> you notice that there's actually, this, is, this could actually almost be broken into two curves kind of right here. There's, there's, a, there's a curve here, and then there's, there's almost a second curve right here. So chances are I'm not going to be able to get that with three points. I'm probably going to need four to do that. So I'm going to come way up here. See how if I overshoot that and stretch, I can capture that shape. I'll probably come over here, something like that. Eh, it got close. I was closer on the first one. But see how few points you can use to capture these shapes if you pull them hard? All right, so that gives us kind of the basis of, 
of our layout. And and the other thing I want to tell you about these webinars, I don't rehearse these. These are all these are all like you are seeing this the same way that you would see this if somebody handed you this drawing and said go. So I am I, and I do that intentionally. Some people say I'm lazy, but um, I, I, I purposely don't rehearse these because I want to, if, if there's a mistake to be made, I want to make it live so I can show you how to work around it. And um, also, I think it's, it's much more realistic to you guys to be able to watch me struggle through this stuff from through the first time as opposed to just Julia childsing it along the way. So if I if I get halfway through this thing and then go, eh, that's not working, we have to back up and go through it, that's, that's semi by design because I want you guys to actually see my thought process and how I go through this stuff and how I deal with, I'm, I'm almost intentionally trying to put myself in a position where I'm going to run into a blind alley that I have to work my way back out of so that you see this. And that's something that you're never going to see that in any other software video. <laughs> no, no other manufacturer has, uh, has the, uh, uh, shall we say fortitude to uh, kind of put their product on the line like that and uh, and do stuff un unrehearsed but I do this intentionally almost all of my videos are unrehearsed and and I'm building it the first time just like you're seeing it for the first time so um, so if we get if we go down a little bit of a blind alley here and have to back up bear with me that's by that's that's semi by design all right so so the first thing that I think that we need to determine after we've got the the profiles here is essentially kind of the cross sections and the easy cross sections to determine would be these guys right would be these two right here we know that this is going to be a semicircular kind of situation so let's jump into let's jump into 3D space and then let's say what what are we going to do with this thing are we going to just pull this and and go like that and we could right because it's still it still maintains our 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 shape in this direction but I think what's going to happen is if I were to draw some lines off of here and try and project tangency I don't have enough information in this curve and here's my here's my two second I don't want to I don't want to like freak anybody out going into like a master's level class on on uh, on uh, um, on uh, continuity, my brain just shut off there. Sorry, um, but essentially, the I do want to go over really quickly, like what I'm talking about for the next five minutes, so nobody's lost. So this, if we have a curve like this, this is called G zero continuity or positional continuity, which means that these points touch. But there is essentially no continuity. This is a sharp edge. So the only continuity is touching, right? So if I take this same thing and I try to do tangent, right? I can only do tangent. This is the only way I can do tangent, right? Is by bringing this up here and lining this stuff up. And this isn't obviously accurate. I'm, I'm fudging this. But if I want, if I want to curve to be tangent, right? If I don't want this to be a straight line, I actually need more points here, which means I'm going to need to not go to the help, which means I'm, I'm going to actually change degree on this curve to give it some more points. So now I've got four points here. I can take this point and I can do that. And this point and this point are now lined up, which means this curve is tangent here. Okay, so in order to get tangency on this end, I need two points. I need this point and this point. In order to get tangency on this end, I need two points. I'm going to need this point and this point, right? So in order to get tangent, right, if I was going to do tangent off this end, I could do, I could do that, right, this point here. So I know that this is lined up. So this is tangent down here. So if I grab this thing and I rotate it, this is my tangency still. So I need two points to be tangent. If I was going to do curvature, I'd need three points to be tangent, which would mean I would need to actually change the degree of this curve to at least five because that's going to give this six points, right? So now I could take this and I could snap this 
there, and I could take this point, and I could snap that there, and then I would have curvature, right? So G0 position, G1 is tangent, which is this, and G2, which is curvature, is that. And, and the way to remember that is touching smooth and smoother, all right? So in order to get, everybody, did that make sense? Did I just lose everybody? Everybody's just like, oh, God, I thought this was a basic one. Um, so I've only got three points here, which means I could only be tangent to this point or that point, not both. So let's fix that. Let's use change degree. And I have a hot key for that, by the way, if you're, if you're wondering how I got to that. Um, change degree allows you to basically add more points to the curve and reparameterize the curve without changing its shape in any way, shape, or form. So if you look at the front view, the front view is exactly the same that it was before but I, I have more points. That's the difference between change degree and rebuild. So this thing, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually use, let's just use the match command to make it easy. And we're gonna match this curve to this curve, tangent, and then we're gonna match this curve to this curve, tangent. So what happened is we just took that curve that we drew and we just forced it to be tangent. We use these things as little proxy objects right so we these are straight we know they're straight um, and we and we forced this curve to be tangent at that point so we know that if we were to do this in the round that there wouldn't be any little peaks or little butts at the end of this right so if you get a little tangency issue you'll get you'll either get this right if you don't do it right or you'll get this and either you don't want to peak and you don't want to butt. You don't want either of those at your seams. So that's why we're going to take this step and force this to be like that. All right, so let's do the same thing at the top. Let's just use a little proxy object. We're just going to draw a straight line in space. Let's take this thing. Let's change the degree to 3 because that's going to give us 4 points. And then let's match. And this is, going to, this is probably going to wank our curve pretty bad, which is fine. We're just we'll go back and edit it once we get once we get that dealt with, All right? And and it did pull it pretty hard. So probably what we're going to need, since we need these curves to control our tangency, we're going to need a different curve, to, a different point to control our shape. So let's change degree, and let's change this to five, and that's going to give us six points that we can now take and put our shape back. All right, see that? Super easy. Now that we don't have these, now that we, we don't need these anymore, we can get rid of them. We've kind of got a nice little building block to start making this shape, right? So let's, let's just see what happens. Let's just, let's join these two curves together and let's just do a two rail sweep and I'm, I'm using my hotkeys, I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that for a beginning webinar. The two rail sweep is over here. And let's just use the top and the bottom and just see what we get. You know, we might get, we might get something that really, that really works well. We can, we can play with some of the rebuilds. In that case, I don't think it's helping. Let's, don't simplify, it looks like it's gonna give us a fairly concise shape. Oh, I don't hate that at all. This, this shape here, let's see how it fits into our design. Um, I'm thinking that maybe this shape here needs to, needs to peel downward a little more. So maybe this needs to come something like this. So maybe what I need to do is Maybe I need to actually add a secondary, um, maybe a secondary shape. Maybe I need to, because I kind of like, I kind of want the fat of that thing to be going through like on an angle. So let's let's redo that. So let's let's take a curve here, and let's come kind of something, I don't know, something like that, and then let's go back and do the same exercise we did before as far as laying it on our tangents. Let's actually make a tangent instead of off at some weird angle. 
All right, so let's change degree on this. I'm going to change the degree to 5 just so we have enough points to deal with. And then let's match. And then match here. And then the other points we're going to use to control our shape from the top view. Something like that. That feels all right. And then we know we've got the correct shape, but we also know that we've got our tangent. In fact, I might just pull this just a hair more. Something like that. Let's try a two-arrow sweep again and see what we get. This might this might get us a better a better shape. Might not. Who knows? Let's see. It's part of the design process. Yeah, that feels better. The isoparametric flow on this feels a little better. So let's go ahead and accept that and see what it looks like. Yeah, I dig that better. See that? And I can play with this, you know, if I wanted to, I could go in here and mess with this, mess with this shape and see what I wanted. Now, if I didn't want this to be a sharp transition, right, if I, because this is, this is pretty sharp, I can do a couple of things. I can, I can go into the model, right, and I could explode this surface, or so I could explode this into its two surfaces, and then I could use uh, an isoparam split, split by isocurve, and split this shape, split this out, and then very simply just go in here with a blend surface, which then gets rid of that, right? So now we've got a nice soft shape. This is one of my favorite techniques, by the way, to use an iso an ISO curve to split and then blend over the transition. And the, the idea is, and the, the analogy that I use is when I first started skiing trees, I was running into all the trees. And uh, I met this beautiful, like 23 year old blonde ski patroller who saw me come dragging out of the woods covered in snow and she was laughing at me. And she says, how, you know, how's your day? And I said, well, man, I just started skiing trees and I keep hitting all the trees. And she laughed and she says, stop looking at the trees, stupid look at the gaps between the trees. <laughs> and so by changing my focus and focusing on the gaps between the trees, I stopped running into them. So the idea here is, is instead of focusing on the surfaces, we're going to actually focus on modeling a gap to be the correct gap that we want and then blend over it, you know, changing our focus back to the trees, stuff like that. So, so this kind of like perception shift where you look from uh, modeling the surfaces to modeling the gaps can change, uh, you know, the perception of basically what you're trying to do. So in this case, the other the other way to do this, if I back up, the other way to do this is if I were to actually go through here and blend um, these curves together to take the point out um, at this point, and I could use the trim to do that. Um, that would allow that shape to, I need to readjust this shape here, but I, I personally, I personally like the, the, um, to do my transitions and stuff in the, um, in the, come on brain, we can do this in the surfaces. So I like to, I like to actually do the transitions in the surfaces as opposed to doing them originally in the curve. So I like to model surfaces sharp and then uh, deal with the transitions in the in the surfaces as opposed to modeling the transitions in to start with. I just for me it just gives me a little bit more control and I just feel more comfortable in that. All right so that gives us that shape and the nice thing about this is we know essentially that this thing should be and maybe it won't we'll have to see it should be tangent. Since we built it tangent, it should be tangent. And in this case, it actually looks really pretty good. See that? Since we took the, since we took the time to project all our curves tangent to start with, as they traveled through space, Rhino maintained that intent and went through there. So we're ending up with a fairly, a fairly decent shape at this point. I think that's okay. This part's going to be simple. All we need to do down here is, is to establish where this is going to connect. And in this point, I'm just going to drag, I'm just going to drag a straight line and I'm going to project it. 
And <clears throat> here's my here's my here's my my asterisk though. The problem, look at this curve. Eek. Okay, that's not ideal. See how many points are on this? This is gonna this is gonna cause I don't want to say an issue, but it's it's not it's not ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to project that to figure out where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to build a curve just using three of these points. And then I'm going to use that one instead. All right. Because because if I look at, let me just get rid of this one first. If I look at this, see how few points they have and it's, it's much more nicely spread out. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to click control drag and I'm just going to make a little proxy surface. See this thing? Let's hide the pole for now. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that gives me a perfect opportunity to use one of my favorite tools, which is the blend tool. And I'm going to set the first position to position. And the second one, I'm going to set it tangency. And I'm going to just drag this slider a little bit. I'm going to preview it. And there's my, there's my secondary shape right there. And I don't necessarily like how that's coming together. So I'm going to move this so that it's a little bit more less bad. That makes sense. <laughs> So the cool thing about this tool is you can adjust it in real time. And in this case, if I go to my front view, I can actually go through here and try and, you know, get some semblance of my original design intent. All right. So I don't need this little proxy object anymore because it's served its purpose. I can join these two objects together. It should join. And it does. Oh, except for that side. Oh, because I didn't join that side. Duh. All right. And so now we all, all we have to deal with is the top of this thing. Now, this type of surface can be very, very difficult to model in other software. <laughs> it's not a big deal in Rhino. It really isn't. So basically, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, let's, let's, pick, let's pick a midpoint. I'm just going to drag a tangent line out of this thing. And then um, let's, let's determine kind of somewhere in here, let's call it like this. And then I'm going to just drag a line straight down like that. So I just made two little proxy objects so that I can then blend, use a blend curve between here and a blend curve between here. And this is going to give me the opportunity to then edit the shape, right? Something like that. This. And I can get rid of these. So now I've got this little I've got this little curve network set up here. And actually the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to split this curve by a point right in the center. And then I've got one, two, three, four curves. Right? So this is cool because what this allows me to be able to do is to use a tool called uh, Rail Revolve, which is a right click under the Revolve tool. And the profile curve is going to be the polysurface edge. Let's chain that. Select the profile curve. Let's see. Let's get, I tell you what, let's make a, let's make a, let's copy the edge of this and let's just make a, a solid curve so that we have everything. So I've got two curves closed into one curve. So this is the curve I'm going to use for my rail. So let's do this again. So the profile curve, actually I take that back. I'm reading this incorrectly. The profile curve are these one. And then the rail curve is going to be this. And the start of the revolve axis is going to be in the center. And then the end of the revolve axis is going to be straight down. And in this case, it didn't do anything that we wanted it to do. So let's try that again.
rail revolve. So the profile curve, we're going to scale the height is going to be this one, and the rail curve is going to be that. Oops, sorry. Got to pick the tool in the right direction. Scale height, yes. Rail curve, start, and the finish is straight down. And it gave us something that was pretty close, but it didn't really, it didn't really um, kind of, it didn't kind of nail what we were looking for. So there's a couple options. I can either, I can come in and I can point at it, this thing, right? I can certainly do that. Um, and that would just be a case of, of coming in here and starting to, starting to manipulate this. But that's, that's kind of not ideal. Um, especially since, let's see, let's change this to, that's already five, let's change it to five in that direction. That gives us, I don't know, that gives us enough points we could actually start messing with it. But I think what we're going to do is we're, we're going to start getting into like some seam issues and things like that where this thing might start peeling apart. Yeah, see how that starts to get a little butt right there? We don't want that. So what are our other options? This is close, right? I'm not, you know, this is not like the worst thing in the entire world. This is, this is, this is not bad. Got to be honest with you. So maybe we'll just hide that. Let's take a look at what some of our other options are. <clears throat> the other thing that we, we can do is we can, we can loft, right? We could loft these things together. And we can do a closed loft. And that gives us something that is closer on our rails, but doesn't necessarily kind of <clears throat> satisfy the end condition. Um, now we could match sir. Like that. And we can just do that to position. And that gives us something close, but it's still, we're kind of still not there, right? So let's try, let's try something else. Let's try patch. And let's use this curve. Let's try all of that. And that gives us a little bit different result. We don't have enough spans here and the stiffness is way too high, so let's drop that. And that's probably not ideal. The stiffness changes. The, the patch tool is basically a trim surface through a bunch of different points. And, um, and in this case, uh, the stiffness is, is indicating the, the kind of how thick and how stiff the rubber is. So I don't like that either. So let's, let's, let's try something else. Let's try patch with just a single point. Let's try patch with the curve and this point. Let's see what that gives us. So that gives us a, a kind of a, a more interesting shape but it's still kind of not doing what I was hoping it was going to do. Play with this a little bit. Yeah, I don't think that's going to get us there. One thing I will show you about patch, which is cool, is it is historically enabled. If you have history enabled, check this out. If I grab this point, I can actually mess with this thing. And in this case, I don't think it's going to get us there. But for form finding and stuff like that, it's actually pretty interesting. You know, maybe you find something that you weren't necessarily looking for. I don't know. In this case, I don't think that's what I want. So I'm going to go back to what I had before, which is actually this surface, which I think is pretty close, all things considered. I may want to, I may want to pick at this a little bit and do a little bit of point editing. Let's see if we can do that without damaging anything. Let's grab, let's grab these. Let's pull these a little bit. Yeah, I think that's going to get us there, guys. This shape in the front is probably not ideal, so let's just, let's drop this a little bit. 
I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Since we pulled everything evenly, we maintained that nice shape on the top. And as long as I didn't do anything too nutty, this should still join. And I think it does. Yeah. All right. That's not bad, huh? All right. So let's take a look at what else we've got going on here. So we have to make a couple of determinations. Do we like this? Do we like this kind of slashing transition through here where it's sharp, or do we want to soften it? Um, I do kind of like the sharp transition at the top and the sharp transition at the bottom. So I think I'm going to leave those. So the only thing that we really need to deal with is just is just this, you know, this transition here. And I think in this case, um, I probably will just go ahead and and do what we talked about earlier, which is to go back and split by isocurve. And in this case, I'm just going to kind of pull something somewhere in there and do the same thing up here. And I'm doing this with two surfaces laid on top of each other, so it might actually end up... I tell you what, let's not do it with split. Let's do it with trim. And let's... Let me stop being lazy and get rid of half of this. So let's, let's get a little bit more focused about what we want to do here. So... Um, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw this transition because I want to. I want to actually control how this is going to happen. So I'm going to soften it from front to back. So I'm going to start sharp in the front, and then allow that to blend out at the back. So let's trim this again. We're focusing on the gap between the trees, not the trees themselves. So we're modeling a gap specifically to do what we want it to do. And then we'll go back and we'll use Blend. And Blend is just like so user-friendly and wonderful that it's just, you know, it just kind of is what it is. I'm going to add a shape kind of in the center here. And something like that. That should be, that should be good to go. Actually, let's do a tangency on both sides. I'm using the Alt key to break the tangency from its originally intended path. I don't know if anybody, if you guys know that or not, but if you hold down the Alt key, you can actually break this loose. This is still tangent, but I can control the shape or the direction of the tangency and how it's happening. So that gives us this, which is a little bit nicer version of that. Okay. So that should all be good to go. This should all join up nicely. And in that case, it does. And we'll just mirror this over again. And join it up again. And join this up. And that should give us a closed poly surface, which it does. Sweet. Living right. All right, so let's talk about the overmold portion of this. The overmold, overmold portion of this thing is basically just taking this surface, uh, duplicating it, expanding it a little bit, and then and then trimming some shapes out of it. So let's let's just make our life easy. I'm gonna copy paste and I'm just gonna shift drag on the scale handle. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Now the everybody's going, wait, it's not it's not so um yes, I know, it's not an offset. It's fine. Relax. We're just going to do this a little bit, all right? So we're going to just make this a little bit bigger. And if you wanted to get nutty, sure, you could make an offset. That's fine. But do that on your own time. All right, so we're just going to grab this out. I'm going to shut the isoprams off so that I can see this thing because it's kind of annoying. So I'm going to go down here to the iso curve density, and I'm just going to shut those off. See how they, the iso curves just disappear. Surface, nothing's changed on the surface. It just It's just the iso curves are different. So now I'm going to uh, start basically just drawing my trimming curves. And I'm just going to very simply draw these things in here. Again, don't get crazy. You don't need a million curves to make this happen or a million points to make this happen. You just have to pull the points you have a little farther.
something like that. Let's get the last one in here. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to explode this because I don't need the top surface and I don't need the bottom surface. And then I'm going to select the surfaces that are left and join them. And then I'm going to cell curve and then I'm going to trim. I'm just going to grab that and that. And that pretty much, I'll have a little bit of adjustment to do on the top and the bottom, but that pretty much gives me this thing, All right? And the last thing I'll need to do is just add some thickness to this, and there's a couple of ways that I can do it. Let's trim the top of this off first. Um, I'm going to just use the curve of this edge. This is something that not a lot of people know. If you type CRV, in the command line when the cutting tool comes up, when the trim tool comes up, you can use a surface edge. And that'll trim that off accurately like that. Okay. And we'll do the same thing down here. Trim, CRV, enter. I just use this poly surface edge. Actually, it doesn't look like that's going to go all the way through. So, wah, wah. So let's do this instead. So I'm just going to trim this just a tad higher. There we go. So there's a couple of ways that I can add thickness to this thing. I can um, I can offset it. I can do a solid offset, which is not the dumbest thing. If I do a solid offset. And I flip it. And I say, oh, I don't know. Let's do, let's do 0.15. It's just going to offset it and make a solid chunk, right? Which is cool because then I can just take that and that should be close enough to do what I need to do. And in this case, see how that's poking out of the top? I think I want a little more. I think I want a little more uh, distance in here. So let's let's do this. People are running for the door. So since this is a solid, instead of a trim, I'm going to use a wire cut and just trim right through that thing. I like wire cut in this case because what it does is it gives you the it gives you the closed edges as opposed to. Um, as opposed to uh, being flapped open like that. All right. So the only other things that we need to determine then would be, in, in this case, would be the would be the hole for the strap. And in this case, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I'm going to do a I was going to do a fancy hole. I was going to do one that was all blended in. What time is it? 9:51. Actually, we're doing okay. How are you guys doing on time? You want to do a fancy hole or a regular hole? We can do either. Let's do let's do a semi fancy hole, shall we? Let's see. I want to make sure that I'm not doing something stupid. All right. So let's. Oh, why not? Let's jump in with both feet, shall we? So I'm going to pull out this section, kind of like this. And I'm going to split this because I want to keep this piece. And then I'm going to scale this a little bit. And again, I'm making this up as I go along. So, you know, it may work. It may not. Who knows? So let's pull this in like this. And then let's, let's do like a scale one, something like this just to get a little relief in there. And let's do another scale one. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to, I'm like eyeballing the gap around this thing. So I'm just trying to manipulate this thing so I get a little bit of a gap.
So that gives me something like that. And then this is a really simple job for blend. We're just going to go ahead and run that. See that. And then let's figure out where a hole is going to be. And in this case, we'll do something like that. And then I'm going to trim this piece out. Let's join all this up. I'm going to work on just this for now. Let's do, ooh, let's do something fun. Let's do this. Let's blend these two together. And I'm going to lock this and just bring this down. So that gives us kind of a soft back to that thing. And then let's, let's blend, let's blend these two together. And if you notice, it doesn't give me enough, I can't, enough pull. I can actually override these. That's too much. Now, <clears throat> this has started to self-intersect, but I'm going to be okay with that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this surface, I'm going to split this out above the self-intersection, top and bottom, and then I'm going to blend these two together. And that's not ideal, so let's work around it. So let's join, let's join this stuff up and work on just that. So if I look at where my naked edges are, you can kind of see where you need to, where you need to fix things. So let's put a blend curve right in the center here. I'm going to blend from the edge to the other edge. And this will give Rhino a guide. And I think we can probably get away with a two rail sweep on this. Let's see. It's not great. So let's try, we tried blend. Actually, that's not terrible. Look at that. I think I must have, I think I must have gotten a little aggressive with the blend. So let's do that. So let's get this close. Check this out. This is fun. This is where we start getting into like, I call this body work. We start doing like, you like working on a car. You're like, tink, 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 tink. So I'm going to get this close on both ends. And then I'm going to split this out right here. See, I warned you. This was supposed to be a beginning webinar, and now we've gotten off into the weeds. It happens. So now I've just got this little strip in here that I can just go in, and this should too real easy. Doot. can set those both to tangency even. Dink. Same thing down here. This should all come together pretty nicely. Yeah, that's not bad, huh? Kind of cool. All right, so let's deal with the let's deal with the last of this thing in here. And so now at this point we have to determine like how like how masochistic how masochistic are we going to get? Because basically as I sit right now, this is a simple trim, right? So like you get you get to a point as a designer where you're like, "Ooh, I want this to be the greatest model I've ever made in my entire life," right? It happens all the time. Um the the then then there's like the technical competency of trying to pull off the greatest model that ever lived. And hopefully you get a little bit of that uh, here. But uh, so basically what we've got is we've got a sharp trim now. And I have to decide like, okay, how crazy am I going to get about this? Do I need this to really, do, does this really have to be smooth like through here or like, am I okay with that? And to be honest with you at, at sitting in an hour into this webinar, I'm probably going to be okay with this. You know, we're going to call it done. Everybody's going, oh, boo. 
Um, if I were, if I wanted to get crazy with this, what I would have to do is I would have to go in and either do one of two things. I'd either have to model a gap that looked something like this, right? Probably way out here like that. I'd have to blend in between this down to a sharp point. Or I would have to somehow resolve the fact that I would need a corner. I'd need some sort of rounded corner coming through here, which would probably mean that this surface, instead of being trimmed sharply, would be trimmed like this instead. Okay? So that that would be the that would be the way that you would resolve that is is you can't it's kind of hard to make a rounded corner from a from a sharp corner like this. So so in order to get the ability to be able to come around that corner, you'd probably need to trim this surface with a shape, something like that. Does that make sense? But I'm going to I'm going to bail out at this point and say that that we're going to call that good. All right. So this is pretty much pretty much where we're sitting, right? We got about an hour into this thing. This is we're in a position where everything is let's do some pre let's do some pre-flight checks. Let's get rid of our curves. Let's get rid of our points. Let's hide our image. And then let's let's do first of all, let's run check. Make sure all of our geometry is valid. Boom, boom, boom. That's good. Let's run cell open poly surface to see if there's anything open. No open objects added to the selection. This is a good sign because that means that everything that's in this scene is closed. Which means if I were to drag this and mesh it, I should get something that I can throw to a printer This is a bad mesh. Mesh has one non-manifold edge. Okay, well that's fine. Uh, normals does not different these intersect each other. This is a good mesh. Let's let's do this. Let's do. Let's find out which one is. Let's find out which one is bad. Check. That's the one that's bad. So let's deal with that. So let's look at. It's got no naked edges, but it's got one non-manifold edge. Holy moly! Look at that. Something in that mesher. This is something that we don't want. So let's fix that. Let's do a new mesh. That's why you check. Let's do, oh, maximum edge length of five. That's why. That should give us a much better result. Usually when I mesh stuff, I zero all of this out. And let's actually do 0.01 on this. That's going to give us a much denser mesh. Might be too much. Yeah, a million polys. That's too much. So let's cancel that. I don't know why this is defaulting to five. Uh, let's do, well, if 0.01 gave us a million polys, 0.02 should give us a half a million. So that should actually be all right. So let's let that run. 758,000. All right. So this is much likelier to be a better mesh. Check. It's going to think for a second. A lot of polygons to check. Good mesh, good mesh, good mesh. Throw it to your printer with 100% confidence and know that you're going to get what you're looking at. All right? So if we know that this is good, Right, we did that through check, and we did that through cell open poly surface. The other, the last thing that I, the last thing that we want to check, and, and this is my favorite icon in the whole Rhino portfolio here. If we go to analyze, um, 
do, 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 do. So now where is it? Edge tools, geometry fix. Ah, select bad objects. Here we go, geometry fix. Select bad objects. It's got a skull and crossbones. I love that. Um, no bad object selection. I have that set up. Um, just sell bad is the command. If, if you type sell bad and nothing lights up and you run check and everything comes back as valid and you make your mesh and then you check your mesh and it says good, 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 send that stuff to a printer and forget about it. It's going to be fine. And in this case, the one thing that I want to point out is these aren't even trimmed together, right? These aren't even like they're, they're in proximity to each other. And there's a little gap here. I may want to, I may want to just nudge that just a hair. I may want to just pull this in just a little bit. But as long as they're overlapping and touching, the, the printer will print that. That's not a problem. All right. And for a prototype, I don't even go to the hassle. Like if I'm just, if I'm just going to throw this thing through a printer and try it and see how it feels in my hand, I won't even go through the trouble of trying to Boolean this together because chances are it's going to change and I'm going to have to untrim it and all that kind of hassle, which is annoying, right? So leave this stuff. Leave this, leave this as a separate closed volume. Leave this as a separate closed volume. Print the thing and see what it feels like. Because if you've got to change it, look how easy it is to change. Whack. I don't have to undo anything, right? So this is something that I try and stress in my level two class is if you don't have to trim something or if you don't have to Boolean something, don't. Your printer doesn't care, right? If your printer, if you're doing this, if you're printing this, the printer doesn't care whether you've done this or this, right? The only problem is if this is wrong and this needs to be here and you did this, now you have to untrim it. So just print this. Just throw this through your printer and print it. And if it's wrong, then change it and print it again. Make your life easy. All right? It sounds like being lazy, but it's actually being smart. It's the thing I try to convince everybody when I talk to them. I'm not lazy. I'm smart. Actually, I'm lazy. But I try to be smart about being lazy. Does that make sense? <laughs> Okay. What, any other questions? You guys have been very quiet. The, the, I'm, I usually intend for these to be interactive. I forgot to mention that, that you're supposed to raise your hand and ask questions and, and interrupt and, and uh, that kind of stuff. But um, any questions on anything that you've seen so far? I think it's 10 o'clock. I think I've, uh, you've listened to me yammer on for an hour now, and I appreciate your patience. Um, helpful, not helpful? Anything in here that you saw that you didn't see before? Anything that you're taking away from this? Any questions on anything that you saw? I'd be more than happy to redo something if I lost you along the way. Any questions on builds on this of like what would you do next or anything like that? If not, I'll let you run. Let's do one last little, let's just do one last little bonus episode here and let's make a couple of materials. Just do a basic. Do this dark gray. And then we'll duplicate this. Make this light gray. And then let's make one that's metal. And we'll throw this here, and we'll just do, ta -da. There we go. All right. That's it. That's all you get. Anything else I can do for you today? Any other questions, comments, criticisms? Fantastic. Everybody's quiet. All right. Um, I will cut this off, let you get on with your day. Thank you for joining. We do these, uh, we probably do these once a month. We do a Windows and then we do a, um, a Mac version. And um, the idea is, you know, that we basically do either some, we either do the same one for Mac and Windows or we do something that's, that's at least in the same uh, vein. And then ideally that we'll have an entire library of this stuff built up. Uh, on that Vimeo page or in the learning resources area. All right. 
Fantastic. All right. Well, I will let you go then. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for the patience uh, and sticking with me for an hour. And um, if you have any questions, you can email me at kyleandmcneil.com or or Kyle. Oh, helps if I type it correctly. All right, those are my two addresses. You're more than welcome to email me and uh, ask questions or uh, anything like that. So um, go forth and create great things. And uh, if you create something really, really cool, email it to me. I love to see the stuff that you people are working on. So, all right, fantastic. Everybody have a wonderful day. And we will catch up with you next time. Thanks.